Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the AVA podcast, the show where I sit down either by myself or with a guest and try to figure out which album fits under a niche umbrella best. You guys probably already know how it goes. I'm your host, Johnny, and we have a very special guest with uh, joining us this week, somebody that uh, it's not new to the channel, but he's new to the show, and uh, it's a, it's a great it's going to be a great, fun-filled funky fresh time you may you know him he's he's one of the one of the one of the legends one of the vets on the platform in the music scene like myself we've been at it for a long time he's in the long haul the hustle he's a he's a grin he's a great guy a great reviewer with a lot of hot spicy takes and when it came time to do one an episode involving this band i couldn't think of anybody better I'm talking about john from artv my goodness, what an introduction! And I was, I was just gonna see how long you were gonna go for. I was like, how? Uh, let's see how many adjectives you can tack on to come up with from good old John from ARTV. Great, just... <laughs> great introduction. Great, great work. Hey, ten, eleven out of ten hey. effort. But th- <laughs> thank you, Johnny, for for having me on and uh, for my first time being on this podcast. Hey, it's uh, it's it's great to have you here, man. You're always a you're always a great guy to sit down. It's not our first time podcasting together. Just our no, first just time this, on the show. Just this, this time. Just this, this specific one. Yeah, just this specific show. Uh, we, but, we go way back on yeah, the podcast. We go way back. We've been, we've been, yeah, we've been podcasting intermittently for a minute. But for those who don't know how this show works, I'm going to be sitting down. We're going to be talking about two records that fit under a niche. Uh, the Umbrella, like I said, and we're going to be talking about them. But before that, so let's, get to, let's get a little chit-chat. How, uh, we're recording, as of recording this, it's post-Thanksgiving. John, how was your Thanksgiving? How, how are you doing? Well, first of all, I just want to say that it was very hard for me to not say one hot minute and chime in with some sort of pun there when you said <laughs> something about a minute mo- uh, a moment ago. But my Thanksgiving was uh, it was very good. It was very chill. It was a, a good couple of days to just kind of, uh, you know, take some time off, give myself a break before uh, the busy season that is year in countdowns and stuff uh, oh, over yeah. on ARTV. That's the biggest time of the year, the busiest time of the year. It's... Uh, you know, December is a crazy month for me uh, between the year-end content, it's my birthday, uh, Christmas, New Year's, so it's just going to be a jam-packed month, so we're recording this right before all of the chaos. And I appreciate you for uh, for fitting me into that for, into that window, but I'm I'm glad that you had a nice little little moment of brevity before the for the chaos really started to mount, and I hope that it's, exactly. a, it's a smooth a little, process uh, for you. It, it, yeah, I, I think it will be. I, th- I think uh, I've done a good job at planning certain things out, and I'm just, uh, you know, it's one of the, it's 2020, man. You can't put too much pressure on yourself. You know, we all we all need a break. But uh, what about you? How did uh, how did Thanksgiving turn out at, uh, at at your household, Johnny? It was nice. It was chill. I uh, I've actually had the last couple of days off from my regular job, so to have that day to kind of just eat food, to just enjoy a little bit of peace. Um, and just a couple other days to kind of extend that because it's chaotic this time of year in general. But like you, I got a lot of stuff to prep for in December. Not my birthday, but everything else, <laughs> you know, uh, in tandem with that. It's so I'm I'm also glad to kind of have a nice little moment to to catch my breath before I dive back into the deep end and uh, start swimming. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I'm uh, you know, I've been thinking about this episode. A lot these two these two records you know like i i got an an extra listen in yeah. to both of them over the thanksgiving holiday and uh you know it's 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 an interesting concept that you came up with i was excited about it when you told me and i know uh you actually put out that poll on instagram i don't know what the results were yeah. but uh I, I know that you with the ava podcast you put out the uh the poll for everybody else to see what the general population is thinking and also where we land on the side of the fence in the case of I'm with you and one hot minute. But, yeah. Uh, both of these records, I mean, before we even say anything else, I think we can both kind of agree that, uh, you know, they both have very unique qualities to them with them both being a, uh, uh, you know, introducing a new member. Such oh, a for integral sure. member too. For yeah. sure. And, uh, like you said, we're uh, we're gonna be talking about two records and, and, uh, two chili peppers records at that. We're going to be getting nice, hot, red, in the in the coming winter months, we decided to get a little hot, a little heated. We're gonna talk about uh, two Chili Peppers records, but 
one last little dive before we get into that. As for those who don't uh, who don't know who are tu- just now tuning in, what we like to do here on the show is uh, to give a little tie up loose ends from the last cast. We like to uh, address any pertinent questions. So if you have a question you want to leave for the for us to address next episode, maybe a thread we may not have brought up, um, a question, a sort of topic surrounding these records, uh, we always like to address them in a little snippet uh, that I usually do in post. And the last podcast we did was about one long jam session type records, which we will address any comments right now. So we had a couple of pertinent comments to address, one involving the cast itself and then one involving the topic that I also want to bring up. But uh, on the co- podcast itself, the Codpast, on the podcast itself, Brady Madison uh, mentioned that they love Nonagon um, and that they are a bit biased because of that, which is something I kind of addressed in the in the poll section of the last cast. But... um. It did. He said that it encouraged him to check out Catch Thirty Three, uh, given that they hadn't really given much time to Meshuga. And I wouldn't say Catch Thirty Three is a great jumping on point for the band Meshuga, but I'd I'd say that for like a discography review. But I do think that um, it's it's a record worth getting into. And again, it kind of fills the the general topic in a in a similar way to. Um, to Nonagon Infinity, but I posted the the podcast on a Discord, and it got a response uh, from Annie is Dead to Me, who had said that they were surprised I didn't talk about Mirror Reaper, a record that I didn't know about. Um, and there's there's other records that that fit under this niche, but the the way I looked into Mirror Reaper and the way that it was described, it definitely fit that sort of mantra of one um, big continuous experience. And there's other records that do that. I kind of mentioned that in the cast itself. But, um, you know, there was the the last uh, Bong Ripper record that, that had a similar feel to it. It was like one big monolithic track. Um, and it, it's interesting, especially in the in the stoner genre. That's a big sort of motif, are uh, big, grandiose tracks that revolve around one big song. You know, Dope Smoker is kind of the same way. You know, Dope Smoker is another track. It's another album, but it, it, there's two tracks on it technically. There's Dope Smoker and Stone Titan, but Dope Smoker itself, it's like this hour long huge experience that encompasses sort of something similar to what Meshuggah was doing with I and that it's one track it's a big ass record uh, but it's a little different you know tracks like Dope Smoker or Delirium Cordia those are like one track albums you know and but uh, Mirror Reaper is sort of in the similar way of like what Bong Ripper's last record is and what you know Nonagon Infinity and Catch 33 are and that it's two different uh types of a big continuous experience and it's actually something i I decided to bring up with john in the podcast itself involving a particular record uh in question but i'm gonna go ahead and cut to past me now to talk about it so john i know that we both have a a love for a certain record by green day uh american (laughs) idiot and it's seemingly on spotify they're trying to make that a sort of one jam session type experience by mashing songs together. I don't know how you feel about that, but honestly, I hate it. I hate that they yeah. make the track listing so jumbled together in that. I I don't know whose choice that was, and I understand that a lot of records do have that flow about them where it's like, oh, one song goes into the next one perfectly. But, you know, if you look to the original uh, track list on, like, the CD or even the vinyl, you know, these tracks are separated up. And even on Apple Music, I believe, back when I had Apple Music, they were separated because I remember I would go out of my way to listen to it on Apple Music because they were broken up if yeah. I just wanted to listen to a specific song. But instead, now it's Holiday Slash Boulevard of Broken Dreams and then, you know, all of these other pairings that are fine but sometimes you know you just don't want to listen to them in the same breath yeah exactly and i feel like it's it's kind of inconvenient 
to to just put it out there like that because there are records like i said like i talked about last uh episode that do that but while american idiot does have that sort of flow in the in the sequencing and stuff i don't feel like like you said it doesn't necessarily need to fit that mold um yeah yeah but uh yeah i thought it would be a interesting point of contention because sometimes some people in the comments or in other places that i posted it mentioned other records and it got me thinking about other records that also fit that mold or that are trying to be put in that mold but uh right. yeah you ready to uh you ready to talk about some chili peppers you ready to break down some two yeah, records you know i i I'm, I'm ready johnny my guy i i'm over here with my hand over my copy of Flea's autobiography, Acid for the Children, I'm swearing myself in right now. And in the case of One Hot Minute versus I'm With You, I mean, One Hot Minute all the way, baby. See, and that's that's where we're split because the, the question I asked John, because uh, these two records do have a very similar thread to them in the Chili Peppers catalog, is which album with a Frusciante stand-in, because neither of these guitarists are with the Chili Peppers anymore, Frusciante's back, added more to the Chili Peppers sound. And as John said, he's going to be taking the stance of one hot minute. I'm going to be taking the stance of one. Uh, I'm with you, but he's going to give his thoughts. I'm going to give mine, and we're going to kind of go back and forth from there. But John, one hot minute. Why? Why? Why is that the more superior guitar stand-in? What? What? Could, what is John? What is Dave Navarro? I was a John Navarro. What does Dave John Navarro, Navarro add to <laughs> to, uh, to to one hot minute that Josh Klinghoffer doesn't to I'm with you? Well, again, I respect both. I really do. Yeah. But for me, it was a matter of narrowing down who fit in better right away, who just kind of felt natural. And with uh, I'm With You, I felt like there was a slight learning curve where they weren't quite all there on the same page. And uh, the ideas didn't naturally present themselves or else maybe lend themselves to having like some... Uh, stellar guitar moments that you just remember years later. And I think enough time has passed to kind of solidify this in my mind. Uh, One Hot Minute, uh, there's just a very experimental edge to this record. And both of them do have this, but I like the heavy, quiet dynamic on this album. You can have something as chill, as lax, and as funky as Walkabout, but then you can have the heavier moments that really pierce through you, like Warped blows the doors off to kick the record off, and then Shallow Be Thy Game, one of my favorite underrated deep cuts. Dave Navarro, a fantastic guitarist. Uh, I know we're both fans of Jane's Addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the work that he did with them prior to this coming out in the mid-'90s. But uh, One Hot Minute, just uh, for me over time, has become one of those like affectionate things that I can just kind of go to and say, uh, no, this isn't the best Chili Peppers record. It's not even in my top three, uh, anything like that. But at the same time, it has so many underappreciated diamonds just kind of waiting to be harvested. And I think I'll harvest it. And a lot of that uh, has to do with uh, Dave Navarro's contributions, how quickly he was able to just kind of get him on the same page as them in the studio. And this was a very unconventional record. Oh, yeah. Bad. You know, there was, there was a significant gap between their breakout record in 91, my year of birth. Shout out to that. Hey. Uh, Blood, Sugar, Blood Sugar Sex Magic. I mean, come on. They they, they took years. Oh, after yeah. That, you that know? Was, and that was a, that was a, ca that was a catastrophic explosion onto the scene in a good way. They, they came out swinging with that record into the into oh yeah the, the cannons the cannons were firing my guy and oh, they yeah. were just uh they were landing the hits they were playing major festivals they were being invited essentially everywhere but there was also the uh kind of detrimental at least in the eyes of the fans and uh, some of the band at the time you know there was drug issues from several members you obviously had john Frusciante departing the band yeah. he had uh intentionally butchered some performances like the now famous uh performance at snl where he was playing his guitar uh, completely out of out of rhythm out yeah. of tune out of everything and uh i i think that that was kind of the, uh, you know, the toppling of all of the building blocks that they had uh, put up together up to that point. But then Dave comes in. Uh, the band spends a lot of time and I'm sure a lot of the money uh, meant for the record from the label <laughs> to just kind of travel about, go to Hawaii and all of these other places to just kind of... Uh, refresh themselves and get a new mindset and i think that that's why this record turned out so well and uh the end product like 
you know, going on, what is it, 25 years, 25 yeah. years ago? Uh, that's that's absolutely insane that it turned out as well as it did with so many memorable uh, moments from Dave Navarro actually coming through. Okay. Well, uh, so do you think that a lot of that chemistry stemmed from prior experience with the band? Do you think that that... Uh, that in sort terms of, of like Dave yeah, uh, having the prior think, relationship? Yeah, do you think that sort of uh, prior kinship Dave had at being part of a similar scene that came up in the early 90s, do you think that that sort of helped gel them better as a band? Yeah, they came from, so they broke out a, a, around the same time, you know, late 80s, early 90s uh, was their kind of coming of age story. Uh, and that's what a lot of people see as the golden years for both the Chili Peppers and Jane's Addiction. Um, <laughs> so them having that relationship, being around each other in the same ecosystem, I think there was an understanding. But also, you know, Dave knew several people in the band, obviously. Uh, you know, instead of auditioning people off of the street like the Chili Peppers have done many times, you know, <laughs> yeah. they, pl they placed a call this time. And I think they placed the call to the right guy because... Um, obviously, Josh Klinghoffer uh, had a relationship yeah. as a touring guitarist before and was kind of like a, uh, I don't know if I want to say protege, but, you know, in a way, it was kind of like a uh, sorcerer in the apprentice type of vibe. Between, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, between him and uh, right. John Frusciante. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, still, uh, I think that Dave coming from that same ecosystem and breaking out at the same band, there wasn't the age gap that there is uh, with Josh. And to me, that's why uh, he fit the uh, puzzle piece just a little bit better. Well, John, I think that that's a fair, that's a fair, it's a fair argument to bring up to the table. But I will say, to sort of lead in off of that, and I feel like you were, it's, it's apt to say sort of a protege for Klinghoffer because I feel like, and especially it comes through on some moments of I'm with you. And maybe that's why I sort of feel like he, he does his own form of adapting that, but, uh, cause they did work together in the past Klinghoffer and, uh, and, uh, Frusciante. He like, uh, he toured with the band during the stadium Arcadium era, you know, and following stadium Arcadium, an album that's full of such, grand ambition you know similarly to blood sugar sex magic it was a big sort of point in their career i feel like danny california was a colossal tune they were riding such a big wave and it sort of crashed again frushante left he's like i'm gonna go do some shit with omar rodriguez the mars volta aren't really a thing anymore i'm gonna do stuff with them and here comes you know klinghoffer yeah he's a young kid but i feel like he's he's a kid with with the right uh, criteria under his belt, I feel like, especially at the time. Because if you look at the sort of sonic palette of I'm With You, right out the gate, it sort of stomps in with something fresh that adapts uh, Klinghoffer's style of playing a little differently. You know, tracks like Monarchy of Roses and Factory of Faith, a great one-two punch of a sort of funky groove, but funneled through a different way. You know, it feels a lot more disco-inspired, which... Oh, is it necessarily wholly new, but the, the, the tone that it's tackled with on there feels fresh. You know, the guitar lines in there, the solo work on Factory of Faith, super different sounding, especially, again, following the era that they were in where it almost seemed like Frusciante was at his most flashiest. Uh, and yeah, some he of was. Some work. of those solos that he pulled out uh, on, uh, you know, it's a double disc album. He's got a lot of room to play with the guitar. There was a lot of weird stuff in a good way. Yeah. Uh, and yes, also flashy at the same time. So I get what you're saying. This came off with a bit more restraint, uh, a bit more of their own, uh, you know, strain of DNA to have Josh in this band but you know their brand of uh disco alt rock uh, the mashing of genres and styles it still definitely felt like the chili peppers for and, sure you know that that's an accomplishment with a new guy yeah and i, I would say you know tracks like uh, adventures of rain dance maggie um uh, tracks like look around and even ethiopia feel like their own sort of klinghoffer style classic pepperisms you know done throughout the track listing and they have a lot of the same theatrics or grandiosity that they were kind of pursuing in the 2000s, but I felt like even a track like Dance, 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 which, again, sort of feels like an offshoot of Cabron from By The Way, it, it has this sort of different flavoring with its guitars. It, it, the guitars play a completely different style, but still feels intrinsically tied to its 
to its roots at where the Chili Peppers were at that time. And I'm, I'm not trying to put the experimental offshoots from One Hot Minute under the bus uh, because following Blood Sugar, they still had a lot of creativity throttling them. Like you said, it's a heavy ass record, you know, and it, yeah. it has its own weirdness, you know, like like P. You know, Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Pete's oh, a you, you, you think Pete? Hey, that's a to- dude. That's one of the most normal songs on the album. What are you talking about, dude? That's you know, that's track six is a classic, man. A oh, P. Yeah. I mean, that's they they always play that one live. It's one of my favorites to catch. <laughs> oh, I, I I bet, I bet. But uh, no, the uh, cheap shots aside, they do take a lot of of sonic experimentation on. Uh, one hot minute in a big way. There's there's one track on there where like the bass rattles in such a way it gives me like very primacy vibes. But like if you're looking at the overall sonic experimentation doing in due in part to Klinghoffer's more rhythmic centric style, I feel like given what they had, the circumstance they were in, they pulled together something a lot more sonically diverse with one hot minute in my opinion. I mean hell Brendan's death song, a song that I know you and I both really enjoy. Yeah, the, the guitars absolutely. on that track have just such a very different flavor with a ballad esque type Pepper song. You know what I mean? Well, it's one of the best songs that they've ever created. It's in my top ten, and yeah. it's phenomenal. You'll never catch. I think it's the best song on "I'm With You," and uh, it's incredibly unique to their own catalog they hadn't really done something like this before and that's what makes it so special it showed me that there was life in this band 110 percent it's just that i didn't feel that there were as many memorable moments whether it was the guitar not just the guitar we can't put this all on josh Klinghoffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know of course i didn't think there was as many uh standout bass grooves and uh you know there weren't as many moments for chad smith to come in on the drums with necessarily as dynamic of a performance like you talked about kind of the disco dip sound coming through on some of the tracks it lends itself to a bit more standard rhythms that you wouldn't necessarily say oh oh yeah that's for sure chad smith i think that they perfected it a bit more not to say that it's one of their best records but i think the getaway uh five years after this ironically (laughs) they love taking five years between albums um and it looks like that's what's going to happen again after the getaway from yeah. 16 to 21. But after taking another five years and uh, Klinghoffer's second record with the band, I think that's where everything really came together. They kind of melted everything in the pot and said, oh, you know, now we're on the same page. Do you, So here's a, here's a different question. Do you think that – because during the I'm With You sessions, they, they recorded a slew of – of material like a smorgasbord more than we've even publicly seen because they put out the whole b-sides collection which is something i'll be doing later on in the month hint hint nudge nudge (laughs) but um do you think that because they were trying they were putting together so much and even those tracks that were released are also very different than what's on i'm with you do you think it was just a matter of sort of trying to find the best or what they thought were the best of a menagerie of experimentations yeah i think that uh what it boiled down to because i know that uh klinghoffer in particular was not to say unhappy but there were songs that he was really pushing for to be released that still as of 2020 have not seen the light of day that i would love to hear because you know some some of the stuff from those sessions that didn't make the album great stuff uh but i think that what they did is they kind of took this, uh, not to use the overuse the analogy, but this melting pot of uh, like, hey, here's some of the classic Peppers uh, sounding tracks. And, uh, you know, we've got enough for those fans. And uh, we also want to do a few with this, uh, not necessarily popular at the time, but a few kind of new ones, a few more experimental ones, and then a few that kind of uh, blend several of the styles all in one track. So I think they were definitely not trying to... uh, please the fans, but I think that they were trying to make sure that they were still cementing themselves as the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and uh, that may have hurt them a bit in the long run, because I think that there's stronger tracks that could have made the final cut. Oh, for sure. That mean, like I said, one could say there is a full album's worth of material out of the Besides You sessions. I heavy, would not disagree. Heavy nudge, heavy wink. Uh, uh, teaser. <laughs> yeah, elbowing you in the chest yeah. right now, in the uh, straight in the ribs. Yeah. Put it out. <laughs> um, so do you think that I'm With You falls shorter for you because 
the there just weren't enough songs that you feel like maybe showcased Klinghoff or the band in general, but also Klinghoffer's abilities more. Yeah, uh, I think that he is an extremely talented guitarist. You're never going to catch me talking down on Josh Klinghoffer's name because he's incredible. I think it's amazing that he was able to do what he did to come into this legendary band and have the nerves, the balls, really, to stick it out (laughs) against this wall of hatred coming in initially. I mean, I saw super nasty comments to him when Raindance Maggie premiered, and I just, I didn't, even at the time, I didn't understand that because I was like... It's not the Chili Peppers' fault that their guitarist keeps leaving the band, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, they, they, are they just supposed to break up now? No. Because uh, maybe we'd be talking about a different story if Anthony Kiedis had tapped out. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, this is not that scenario. And I think that uh, maybe his strengths weren't totally played to. I want to say this about both records. I think that both absolutely have five stellar cuts to open up the record tracks one through five on i'm with you and one hot minute phenomenal oh, tracks. yeah i mean i Dude, I, I, yeah. I think they both they both really kick it off on a great no- note uh, monarchy of roses is fantastic i loved warped like i mentioned it just kind of kicks you into space right away there's oh, a yeah. lot behind that cut and all the way up through coffee shop which has become one of my favorite underrated tracks and andy wants a baby uh one of the best songs on i'm with you i love the uh, lyrical content and the way that they kind of poke around and prod with new ideas on that so i think that there is uh, a good promise it's just like you said it came up a little bit short for me on the hey like i know you're i know you've got it but you're just not quite showing it to me yet so you know come back try again like i think you can get together in the studio and be a little bit more succinct and tight and uh come come together and put out that product and i think that they did that with the getaway i would i would agree that i i do think while i love i'm with you and i think that it is a much more uh underrated record in the discography not to say one hot minute is it it very much is as well like i don't want to just stroke i'm with you Zigo. i also really love that run through one minute i think warped the one two punch of a throttling cut like warped into a more softer driven cut like aeroplane insane yeah. uh the yeah. the title track incredible Tran- i think uh transcending i know that's a track that yes. you really enjoy that oh the closing to this record uh, one high minute is so good i mean they're coming out of a few of the back half of this record really that's kind of what sells me on it because some of my favorite tracks live there i mean one big mob walkabout yeah uh, we are i already mentioned uh, shallow be thy game and then transcending to close it it's just an eargasm oh for sure and like his guitar playing i definitely think shines more to to contrast the two dave navarro doesn't really let up the gas when he starts yeah. you know uh i'm yeah. with you they definitely like you said they do kind of toy with other instrumentation they do stuff like even you brutus and police station which integrate de- different sounds and the guitar necessarily isn't as flashy on those cuts um and i can yeah. see the songwriting isn't as strong in those tail-ended cuts for sure um at least in yeah. comparison to tracks like annie wants a baby which almost feels like proto uh the getaway in its own sense like how sure the plays it out. was a breath of fresh air yeah. really and, and the songwriting game and i think that's why the back half lags for me a lot of that it's not just the lyrics but i think a lot of things uh, kind of blend together a bit for uh, more for me once we get past Rain Dance Maggie. I still like that track. I've probably just heard it a few too many times, but uh, starting with like Goodbye Hooray, especially through uh, Meet Me at the Corner. I mean, we get, I think the closer is absolutely solid. Like, yeah, I really yeah. do like that. Dance, Dance, Dance has some great ideas. Uh, you know, the Chili Peppers with their closing tracks normally don't mess around. No, and, no. Uh, while I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dreams of a Samurai is the closing track on the getaway. No. Is that right? Uh, let me check again real quick. I think so. I think so. I'm thinking that is because... Uh, yeah, it is. I just looked okay, it up. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I was, I, was, I was on the money there. I think that... Uh, you know, it's just just to show that they don't mess around when it comes to closing tracks. And even if some of those before uh, leading up to Dance, Dance, Dance lagged for me, I think that it's worth getting through those to get to that uh, moment of closure at the end to show that they're still willing to not just give up on it. It didn't feel like the spirit of the band had been sucked out. Yeah. Even if some of it's not for me, once we get to that moment, it just kind of seals it for me. Like, yes, this is going to be... There was never a doubt in my mind that said, oh, the Chili Peppers are going to break up. This is going to be their final album. No, yeah. of course not. There's still a huge spark there to uh, uh, get on the same page, to create something that's 
you know, up there with some of their best stuff. So before we go over these Instagram results, uh, I do have one other question in conjunction with these two particular records. Do you think, sure. um, had he been given more time to, or had he not left the band because Kiedis was kind of still losing his shit, um, they would have pulled together something even more expansive, like in a sort of way that they did with the getaway with Dave Navarro. Hmm. That's a, that's a good question, Johnny. Um, with Dave Navarro, I, I hate to say it, but you almost kind of see him as a fantastic one night stand. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like you just, you just, you just kind of know you got that. He's got that look and he's like, you know, this isn't going to last, right? <laughs> Even if we, we're going to, we're going to awkwardly text each other and we're going to, you know, we're going to see about meeting up. It's never going to happen. You know, I think he kind of knew it was over after that. So while the idea of it, uh, excites me, I almost know that it is a fleeting thought and uh, it's like, yeah, we, we could have been great together, you know, type of thing. And it's like, it would be really interesting to see if they would be able to uh, achieve even half of uh, the creativity that they were putting out and that they were kind of searching for. But I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't see a timeline. There's a lot of things where I'd like the Josh Klinghoffer situation. I didn't see a timeline where Frusciante came back again. Yeah. But that has proved me wrong. So, uh, you know, maybe it could have happened. Maybe in an alternate reality, an episode of Rick and Morty, Dave Navarro <laughs> is still the guitarist of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And we never got Californication. We never got By the Way, which is a damn shame. Cause, and, and it sucks. Like, One Hot Minute is stuck between two of the band's, like, most revered, highest regarded records. And it kind of sits in this, like, middling road of, of again, underratedness in, in tandem with the pantheon of the discography but still kind of got a raw deal at its time, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. judging from the Instagram polls, which if you do want to contribute to the polls, I'm at viral rack on Instagram. Any comments yeah, give, you may leave. Give the, give the boy a follow at yeah. viral rack people. You know, I, I, the polls are, uh, I, I don't even know the results of the poll. Uh, I, I could be completely uh, gained up against here, but um, you know, I think it's a fun way to kind of, pick the audience's brain yeah to see yeah you know, see what you, I, I, you know what i think only matters so much what do you think you know well a lot of people agree with you uh really <laughs> yeah one hot really? minute, one hot minute won 76 percent to 24 a 19 votes for one hot minute six for i'm with you uh wow yeah like and i mean i given what you had said i'm not entirely surprised you know you, the argument you presented makes a lot of sense you know uh i am inter I, mean, I am shocked at the way some people that i know did vote um yeah yeah but it's it's it makes a lot of sense when you think about sort of again the the relationship between the two it makes a lot of sense i don't know if I, yeah. it's, it's it's something i don't i don't know what went into when people vote i brought this up last cast i don't know how much weight either record holds in people's camp if they just like that record more, you know, or not. Right. Like, uh, Or is it somebody's favorite? Yeah. You know, did somebody that did vote for I'm With You, is this, like, somehow, like, you know, let us know. I mean, I love to see feedback like this because it's genuinely interesting when people make a compelling argument for something that, you know, I don't dismiss. I don't yeah. think I dismiss I'm With You. But, you oh, know, no. like, maybe it's, it's not a record that I hold in high regard. I didn't really, I think the easiest way for me to put it, I didn't form a bond with this album uh and i just i did with one hot minute yeah well and i will say um a mu the, the mutual friend of ours that did vote in uh in the poll crash he voted on your side mm. yeah he he voted there one you hot go. minute. yeah if if uh the man the myth the legend crash <laughs> the man the myth the legend i hope you're listening crash. yeah um he he voted for one hot minute and he did that video on the record years he ago did. Um, he did. And I, know I remember watching that. It's a it's a soft spot for him, and, and it is it is for me as well. Like the 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 Navarro era is something I don't necessarily flack. I mean, their Love Roller Coaster cover was on heavy oh. rotation for me as a kid. Final Destination Three yeah. soundtrack, baby. Beavis and Butthead, baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm just over. Yeah, you're over here thinking about Beavis and Butthead. I'm over here thinking about these. It's these people burning up in a uh, in a what is in a tanning booth. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! It is one of my favorite yeah. deaths from the Final Destination. I mean, series. same. Not, I do like. I know? do like. I for, I forgot that that song is in that in that scene, like that cover of it. Um, yeah. But yeah, 
that uh the the poll the polars were on your side, buddy. You uh you got the the popular the popular opinion. At, May the know. odds be ever in my favor. Yeah. Um I do have a I do have a question about the chili peppers though for you. Do you sure. think because Frusciante's back, which I know both of us are excited about. Because, again, I yeah. like Klinghoffer. I like Navarro. I like what they did with the band. But Frusciante with the Chili Peppers just feels right. You know? Frusciante's back, and he's better than ever <laughs> for Christmas this year. <laughs> Frusciante is here. I like that. I like that, that little... Uh, that little it's my little welcome back yeah, jingle. Yeah, just standing outside of his house with like a sign, just like dancing with like. <laughs> it just on. says like "Open your window," and as soon as he does, I start singing for Sean. He's back, back and he's better than ever. <laughs> um, do you think that now that he's back with the band, do you think that sonically they are going to sort of continue some of the threads, some of the darker, necessitary? Uh, sounds. Do you think they're gonna delve more into the sounds that they had been experimenting with with Klinghoffer over their technically two but could be three album run, or do you think they're gonna pick up where they left off more with some of the the more ambition behind what was on Stadium Arcadium? Uh, I think that honestly, I could see it being more of a little bit of a, a shake off the dust. Let's pick it back up because there's rumors of like Rick Rubin, you know, being the producer. It sounds like they might be scrapping Danger Mouse, which, you know, I, I kind of hate because, yeah. uh, you know, I think that a lot of people hate on the getaway and, uh, you know, I, I, I will stick up for that record any chance I get. I'm, I'm a big fan of Danger Mouse. Same. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm so drawn to what he does for a lot of these bands. He's done great work with uh, people like Portugal, the man, even uh, Jack White, that uh, collab record that they did. Uh, Rome. Yeah. Back in 2011. He, I think Danger Mouse deserves he you know produced, another chance. He produced one of Beck's underrated records, in my opinion. He produced Modern Guilt. I love that record, I, and his production is cool on there. Yeah, there you go. There, Danger Mouse uh, has been involved in a, a lot of really cool things. Uh, Broken Bells as well. Yeah, Shout out to uh, that project. Hell Very yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, I could see uh, I could see John Frusciante being the guy to come back and be like, you know, I've gotten my. Uh, Tom York Twilight isms, <laughs> uh, Twilight years out of my system, or else I'm, you know, he's still doing it on the side. He's still putting out those records and stuff. Uh, I think that when he comes back, which he already has, to the Chili Peppers, once we hear that end result, it might sound a bit more like the stadium arcadiumisms rather than I'm with you, but and uh, the getaway. But I think that a little that a little bit of that could rub off because this is not the same situation that we were staring down the barrel of before. It yeah. wasn't, uh, you know, like oh, uh, you know, it's kind of like Josh had his blessing. You know what I mean? And Dave just kind of came in out of necessity, and because John abruptly exited the band, and this more so came at the end of a touring cycle for Stadium Arcadium, and. You know, uh, Josh and John had already been working together. So maybe we don't totally uh, get an abandonment of that decade because I think yeah. it's an important decade for the Chili Peppers. But um, I would like it if they would at least continue to play some of the tracks. I think it would be great if John would be willing to maybe sacrifice a bit of his own ego. I'm not calling him egotistical, but I think I mean, it takes a bit of a sacrifice of ego to, in order to play songs that somebody else helped right that you weren't a part of it, it might feel like playing a cover song to him but genuinely i think dark necessities brendan's death song oh, stuff yeah. like that uh i think that those are staples of their discography and to ignore those would be a sin i even think they could do like extended versions of some of the more groove rhythm centric oh, moments like jam it out they man. can make jam it out live they can extend rain dance maggie into this like dreary psychedelic you know jam i could see that easily going down with frusciante oh, just yeah. like noodling yeah i could see him playing with feedback on that adding in a solo whatever you want to do man yeah. just don't ignore those two albums because uh as as divisive as they might be for some fans i suppose like you you, you gotta at least admit that they're is talent there is chemistry and there are at least some killer songs oh for and, sure uh, among the ranks there for sure and then do you think uh what do you think Klinghoffer's up to what do you think he's doing i think uh does he did he put out a solo record 
I don't think. Or did he talk about one? I think he might have talked about one. I think that's what it was. I think he did an interview with uh with somebody, some well known uh radio personality. I don't think it was Zane Lowe. Maybe it was. It was somebody like that. Yeah, he. Dro- um, and he. He dropped a record and yeah, in in October he dropped a. There you go. I didn't even realize that. I, I, yeah. See, because I was curious. <laughs> Well, that's what he. That you know what, Johnny? Uh, I'm just gonna go on a whim here. I think he's put out a solo record about a, a month and a half ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> that's my guess. That, that's <laughs> I don't that's know. A pretty sad. He also put out an album last year. What? The sh- I didn't even know. Mary, I, Flea man, was I on like, it. I've, what? <laughs> what? Man, I feel I feel a little guilty right now because I'm over here talking like, oh yeah, you know, Josh Klinghoffer, a very very talented guy, but I've like just completely missed two records. From I mean, <laughs> to be honest, as much as I love for Shantae, I have not heard all that much of his solo work. I, like, I was just about to put up my guilty hand over yeah. here and say, you know what? To balance out the scale, to be fair, I'm not out here listening to Prashante solo stuff really. Yeah, so like you know. Uh, strike me down if you want, but I haven't really listened to the solo stuff from either of them. Yeah, but uh, I mean, yeah, I feel like that uh kind of wraps up at least a lot of the the thoughts I had about about these records. Do you have any any other closing remarks you'd like to make about about these projects? I think that they both um absolutely deserve your attention. I don't think either of them are like ones that you know, like some artists are like, uh, you know, you could probably skip that one uh, <laughs> yeah. unless you're like a, a hardcore fan or whatever. Like, no, I think that these are both records that should be listened to because everybody's uh, taste is going to be different. I think that there are uh, eccentric qualities to both of them that make them entertaining, even if you don't find yourself coming back to them a ton. I think both of the records are uh, absolutely worth your time. You know, I had a good time uh, kind of stacking them against each other and thinking about it, thinking about things too when it came to uh, prepping for this podcast. Thanks, man. I think that, yeah, of course, man. I'm, I, I appreciate the challenge here. It was, uh, you know, it wasn't really a question that I had to mull over. Uh, like if you, I don't know, in the future, you might feed me a tougher <laughs> tougher topic to choose between. Hmm. But I uh, I appreciate your arguments and, uh, you know, I hope you see where I'm coming from too. Yeah, of course. And if you're listening, if you if you have any discussion points, we didn't we neglected to bring up as far as these two guitarist contributions to the band with these particular records, let us know. In the comments, like I said, at the beginning of the next cast, I will address any lingering thoughts that were left in the ether before uh, pilgriming on. But, uh, John, do you have anything necessarily you want to you wanna throw out there? Any projects coming soon down the pipeline you want to throw out there? I know you said Your Endless is coming up. You got anything else you got going yeah. on? Yeah. Uh, it's the, the main focus right now is uh, the year-end content. I'm excited for that. It's about to start. Uh, coming i think you said you were putting this out in early december so yeah uh, you know give the channel a look if you haven't already uh give it a a, the year in content a go i'm gonna be you know doing all of that stuff Uh, i'm gonna be reacting to my spotify rap and uh comparing those results to my uh own last.fm data and comparing the two to see if spotify is lying to us or not so uh fun stuff like that you know there's a lot of big videos coming out in december it's a uh, busy time of the year but a good one so that means lots of good content coming on the pipeline and guys if you're watching from my channel please do not hesitate to subscribe right here to my boy johnny viral rack on all social platforms give him a follow give him a sub give him even ring the bell why don't you ring that bell go ahead and tap that right now just go ahead and nudge it just go ahead and nudge it turn the notifications on yeah give it a little tap see what happens you know he might might (laughs) blow your mind with uh you know the content that's on the way i mean thank you man i appreciate i appreciate it i was about to say the the exact same thing you took the you took the words out of my brain and you put them on the page uh yeah if you like this podcast if you if you if you're listening to us on youtube throw us a like if you're listening to us elsewhere uh check out the channel uh, i've been trying to get these on iTunes or on the apple podcasts through a certain third party still mm-hmm. trying to figure that out but uh if if i get it up there and you're listening to it check us out elsewhere um follow follow me and john on our socials on uh the instagram on the youtube i am artv john everywhere yeah. that's not with an h j-o-n no it's yeah it's it's john sans h get get it get it in your brains everybody always thinks i'm art 
Art V. I like. I, I've donated to Twitch streamers before that I like, and I like. I'll, they'll be like, "Oh, thanks." I, I donated to Gus Johnson, and he said, "Oh, thanks, Art V." <laughs> and I was like, uh, "Not quite." It's it's just they're all caps for a reason, you know. Right? They are all caps. It says ARTV, and then games is lowercase. Yeah. But you know, it's it's cool. It's like it's like when people read my username, they it's it can be a tongue twister. I get me because my mine has a tongue twister a little bit. Art V, no. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> viral crack. Viral that crack. Been your use. <laughs> it, it makes it, it rings a little better than viral rack. It's it's hard to it's hard to say. But uh yeah. I do get tongue tied. Viral rack. It's 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 hard it's that's and that's what's ultimately my crux. People don't sub because they don't know how to say my name. That's that's how it is. That, <laughs> they're like it's too much work to understand. That's why people call me Johnny anywhere else. <laughs> they're like, just it's Johnny. <laughs> don't worry about anything else, it's Johnny. But John I might start calling you V Rack. V Rack? Hey, that works. <laughs> but uh, John, thank you again so much for coming on, my guy. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Of course, to you. Um, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Thank you again so very much for listening. Um, like, subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons. If you want to join their ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content like extended cuts of videos, or to help drive the community via polls, it's linked in the description. John's on there. He uh, I am. he gets to engage in the in the content on there. But uh, yeah. Give it, give it a, give it a check out, give it a scope, and uh, tell me what you think. Uh, but we're gonna go. I've been Viral Rack. He has been John from ARTV. You guys, RDV. Art V. You guys have a uh, <laughs> good days, lives, and situations. And we'll see you another day. <laughs>